Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord for the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus above every name. We thank the Lord for the privilege and honor to be able to come and fellowship your presence, hear your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's turn our Bibles over here to the book of uh, the Gospel of John, please. And we'll start here in John chapter 14 and read some scripts here about the Holy Spirit in our life. Now, here in John chapter 14, Jesus said this in verse 16. Now, he's getting ready to leave. He's preparing his disciples for his departure and letting them know that they're not going to be comfortless. He's, he's going to send the Holy Spirit. Now, verse 16 of, chap, of John chapter 4, Jesus said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because I seeth and not need to know him. For you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Now, verse 26, Jesus, Jesus said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. And then in John 15, Jesus says here in verse 26, But when the Comforters come, whom I will, who I will send unto you from the Father, in the Spirit of truth, which perceive the Father, he shall testify of me. Now here in John 16, the Scripture says here in verse 7, we'll start here. Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it's expedient for I go away. For I go and I away, the comfort will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he's come, he'll prove the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince is the world of judge. I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it, now verse 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth. For he not speak himself, what's the reason here? Here, that you speak and show you things to come. So Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in life and reveal truth to us. And as believers, we need to depend on the Holy Spirit to teach us his, God's word, bring the word of God back to remembrance. The Holy Spirit doesn't bring up our mistakes. He doesn't bring up our sins. He didn't, he's not a condemner. Actually, he edifies us and comforts us. And that's what, what the word of wisdom, word of knowledge Prophecy, discerning the spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, the interpretation tongue. These gifts of the Spirit will help the church do exploits in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, let's go over here and let's read some of these, where they're all at, out here in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, the scripture says here, uh, we'll start in verse 4. Now, there are differences, there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but the same God, which work with all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is to profit with all. For the one is given by the word, the, the, by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, by the word of knowledge, but the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. To another, uh, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning the spirits. To another, divers kinds, to, divers kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of but all these work at that one self same spirit, dividing every man's service he will. Now, this is what God gave the church, the gifts of the spirit. Now, the fruits of the spirit are listed there in Galatians chapter 5, you know, love and patience. And, well, let's just read them, you know, and then we'll compare, do the comparison. In Galatians chapter 5, now we'll start here. In, uh, let's start here in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and good sense there's no law. Now, these are the fruits of the Spirit, and they'll develop in our life, and thank God they will. It causes us to become a, like a more mature Christian. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit, will suddenly just one of them will manifest, or two, two of them working together. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, maybe you've been in a service sometime, and the minister is up there preaching, and suddenly he said, the Holy Spirit just showed me there's, you know, there's four people here that haven't received Jesus Lord, or there's, you know, five people here, and, and you've got back problems, whatever it is. Well, that's how the Holy Spirit will suddenly just move on someone's heart or reveal to that person what's going on. And we have those gifts of Spirit are manifest through our life as God will, and we need to be open to them. You know, they're so powerful, and they change people's lives. It was Jesus that was at the well, missed that woman, and he began to tell her about her, her you know, about her, uh, who she was living with. And that got her attention. Well, now we have to realize here is that we have the Holy Spirit in our life to lead us and guide us, reveal truth to us, and we need to depend on the Holy Spirit to help us in our prayer life. You remember we read there in Romans chapter 8 earlier, in Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 28, that likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh their intercession for us, for which cannot be uttered. And he that searches heart, no mind spirit, because they make their intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 
And we know that all things work together for them, love God, to them who are called to his purpose. So the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer life. Thank God he does. He helps us as he, he gives us utterance to pray in tongues. But also there's, there's uh, you know, tongues in a public assembly where someone just speaks in, in tongues and somebody else interprets. That's like equivalent to prophecy. You know, you've been in a certain, maybe you've been in a service before that someone said, thus saith the Lord, and they begin to prophesy something. Well, that prophecy is supposed to edify, exhort, and comfort us, according to what the scriptures teach in 1 Corinthians 12. And tongues interpretation is like equivalent to that. And maybe you've never been around that, but nevertheless, thank God, it should manifest more often. Because we need the gift of spirit to manifest. They help us. The Holy Spirit helps us do everything that we're supposed to be doing as a believer, that we're called to do, like preaching the gospel. And we need to, as we you know, share God's word with other people, we're expecting the Holy Spirit to move in their heart and, and show them that they need to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And a believer needs to know about who we are in Christ Jesus and what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. And by you and I, you know, knowing God's word and applying God's word to our life and also being opened up to the Holy Spirit in case he want to use us. You know, there's things come to all of us that we know we're supposed to go give somebody something. Maybe we're supposed to take some people over some groceries, food, whatever, you know. And all kinds of thoughts can come to you about doing this, you know. They're just on your way over there, you know, what are they going to think? You know, what, what, how will they think about this? I knew this guy, and, and he came back. He came home from the grocery store, the rotisserie chicken, and some salad, bags of salad. And, and so he brings it into the house, you know, and he's going to have this today for, for lunch, dinner, whatever, you know. And it just keeps coming to his heart. Why don't you just take it down to those elderly people who live down the street? So, okay, so he bags it all up. So walks as he's walking down to the, where these dear people live, and uh, all the way there, the thought came to him. Thoughts came like, "Well, they're not going to want the chicken. They can't eat chicken. It's in, and, and they're not into salads. And plus, you know, it's got carrots in it. Maybe they can't eat carrots, and you know, because they they're older people, and you know, all this other stuff." Finally, the dear brother got to the door, rang the doorbell. The elderly couple comes to the door, and they, hey, I just want to stop by and bless you with this, or something like that, you know. And they looked at each other. Like, you know, I'm so happy that someone even thought of them. Well, whether it turned out that way or not, we're always supposed to give, right? And Jesus taught us to give. Well, one of the things is that the Holy Spirit would lead us by our spirit to do something for someone. Then the mind kicks in. You know, like that dear brother going down that house. You know, all the, all the time he's walking there, the thoughts are coming to him that these people can't eat this stuff. They don't like this stuff. This is, you know, you got it for you. And oh, went on and on and on. Well, you know, the spiritual things to our minds, foolishness. Thank God for our minds. God gave us our minds. But when it comes inside of our spirit, where the Holy Spirit dwells as believers, then he'll lead us and guide us, and he'll reveal truth to us. You know, like over here in 1 Corinthians, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And the scripture says here in verse 16, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Now chapter 6, verse 19 says, what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which of God? You're not of your own, for above price. Therefore glorify God in your body and spirit, which are God's. And then let's go here to 2 Corinthians. Just keep going to write, obviously. In 2 Corinthians. Now the scripture says here in chapter 6, in verse 16. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For your temple living God has got to sit on... I said, I will dwell on them, and I'll walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So the Holy Spirit dwells in our spirit. In fact, let's go back here and read something else, too. Go back here to this 1 Corinthians, please. Got you jumping around. But here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, I'm going to start in verse 1. We'll read into chapter 3. And Paul, by the Holy Spirit, saying, And I, brother, when I came to you, came not with an excellent speech or wisdom declaring you the testimonies of God. For I determined not to do anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with your weakness and fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preach was not with the ties and words of man's wisdom, but demonstrate the spirit of power. That your faith should not stand the wisdom of men, but the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect? Yet not the wisdom of the world, nor the prince of the world has come to naught. But we speak wisdom of God in, in, in a mystery, even hidden wisdom, which God ordained that we should walk, uh, ordained before the world uh, to our glory. Let me read that again. But what we speak, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of the world knew. For had they known, it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. But as is written, I had not seen nor ever heard neither heart of man the things which God prepared for them that loved him. But God had revealed them to us by a spirit. The spirit searched all things, yet the deep things of God. 
For what man know the things of man, say, things of man save the spirit of man, which is in him? Even so, the things of God know no man but the spirit of God. Now we were not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is given us, which is is of God, that we might know the free the things are freely given us unto us. Which things uh, also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things to spirits. Now verse fourteen. But the natural man receiveth not the things spirit of God, for there's foolishness in. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So we can see here that we discern with our spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you know. Like remember, we've read there before about the Apostle Paul. He perceived in Acts chapter 16 that this woman had a demon. She's telling fortunes, psychic-like. Well, and she kept saying, what she was saying was true. These men are servants most high God, which show us the way of salvation. This did she many days. But Paul being grieved. So he's picking this up in his spirit. turning, And he cast the devil out of the lady. And she got delivered from it. Now, you know, suddenly you, you, something like that can come to you about someone. You know, it's not like you're trying to pick up something on some people, but we need to be open to God. And why? Because the Lord tried to protect us from people. You know, some people come in and, you know, are, she, are, are wolves in sheep's clothing. So they'll try to deceive you in, in, in your ministry, even a dear pastor. So we want to be open to the Spirit of God. You know, not critical. And not skeptical of everybody, just because they came, we don't know who they are, but at least be listed inside of our spirit. And the natural man receiveth not things spirit of God, for there's foolishness, neither can he know them, because they're spiritually discerned. It goes on and says here in verse 15 and 16, But he is spiritual, judge all things, he himself judge no man. For who would know mind, Lord, he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. And I, brother, Paul said, could not speak as in spiritual, but as in carnal, even as babes Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for either two are not able, bear it, neither yet are able. For you are carnal, whereas among you envy, strife, and divisions. Are you not carnal, walk as, mere, as men? For one say, I'm Paul, another say, I'm Paul, so are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, who's Paul? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. And I plant, I, I plant a pile of water, but God giveth the increase. So then neither see the plant of anything, neither see the water, but God to give the increase. Now, the Holy Spirit's in our life, and one of the functions is he's going to lead us and guide us. And you just suddenly just may realize, you know, you're just not supposed to be with this person. And God bless you if we work this all out, but nevertheless, you know, you'll pick up on this. Well, it, we need to listen to the Lord. We'd never been taken advantage of if we'd learned to listen to God and listen to what we had in our heart. So again, in Acts chapter 16, Paul picks up on this. See, it's, you know... He picks up there's something wrong with this woman. But I, see, if you went by what she said, you, she's like a great Christian. But no, she had this demon. She had, it was telling, telling her fortunes about other people. And so he picked up on this after many days and being grieved. And then the, apparently the Lord dealt with him about what to do about it. Well, that would be the way all of us are in life. We just suddenly realize there's just something going on here. You know, your children, your family, loved ones, and we all need this as parents to be led by the Holy Spirit. And... Always praying for our children, praying scriptures like Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, of course, the 91st Psalm, believing God to protect it. And if they're not saved or if they're kind of, kind of away from the Lord, praying that God will send labors across their path to minister the gospel to them, that their hearts be open to receive Jesus Christ or get back in fellowship with the Lord and follow the Lord. All of us believers need to be praying for one another, especially our families, loved ones. It's our responsibility. I mean, no one's going to, I mean, unless God really works on someone, no one's really going to pray for their for your children more than you are. So it's important to put that time in prayer and seek the Lord and look to the Lord for direction. You just suddenly just know that, you know, there's something here that needs to be taken care of. Can't quite put your finger on it. And this lady's coming to our service and she had a couple of daughters or like teenagers and then she had a baby boy. And so um, they live in this tri-level house and uh, she, her little boy's like four years old by now. And she's upstairs on the top floor cleaning and running the vacuum sweeper and, you know, doing the stuff around the house. And while she's running this vacuum sweeper, it comes to her, her heart. There, there's something dangerous going on with her son, her little boy. Shuts off the vacuum sweeper. is looking through upstairs there in the bedrooms and whatever and can't find him. Calling out his name. Looks out the window. Summertime. Screens her in. Looks out the window and, and sees her husband working out in the back of the yard in the garden. She yells at it. You know, yells at it. Is he there with you? He shakes his head, no, you know. So then she went to the main floor of the house. It's, you know, it's getting alarming here. She just knows there's something going on with her son. And she's looking for the main floor, you know. Doesn't put, so finally she goes down in the basement. The basement's finished basement, you know, nice basement. And so she goes down there, you know, and it comes to her just get quiet. And so she gets quiet and she hears a, mm, mm, mm. 
and she's thinking, where's this, no where's this muffled noise coming from, my son? And she sees the freezer, and she goes over to the freezer, and he was in there. Now think about this. She said, being taught about being led by spirit, when I'm, it helped me save my son's life when I just realized there was something going on. Well, you know, the little boy had gotten in there, you know, kids are, you know, and gotten in there, and God miraculously saved his life. Well, that's a, one of the reasons, one of the benefits of being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, we miss God, you know, but we learn also. We learn by those successes and failures, and we need to always be, one thing, praying in the Spirit. As we pray in the Spirit, which is praying in tongues, is going to help us become more sensitive. It's like the praying in tongues is like the doorway, the gateway to the gift of spirit operating in our lives. And God gave us tongues interpretation and, along with those other seven gifts. Those other seven gifts are manifest in the Old Testament. But the with the New Covenant, we got two more additional ones, tongues interpretation and tongues. And, you know, as you're praying in tongues, you want to believe God that the Lord would uh, interpret to you so you know what's going on here. And not only that, but sometimes you just know in your spirit what you're praying about that you've been praying and interceding. And that's an important part of our job and life as, as Christians is that we pray, that we intercede. There's so much that needs to be prayed about. We pray for a nation. We pray for our loved ones. We pray to stay in fellowship with God so we can hear from God about what God wants to do in life. And you see there, we read there, that the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for there is foolishness in him. Neither can, he, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. We discern with our spirit. We think with our mind. We feel with our body. We have emotions, you know. But we, we need to, to go by what we got in our spirit. What does the Lord want me to do? And he teaches us through giving that we're supposed to, and we're supposed to do something for someone, you know. We're supposed to give them whatever we got, you know, that the Lord's deal is about giving. That's a way that we start following God is by, by in giving, by stepping out in faith. I mean, that's one of the areas where I started. You know, it seemed like I could always hear from God about giving. I'm not saying I was perfect at it, but it just seemed like I just knew I was supposed to give this to somebody. And in my early Christian life. And then later on, when I want to know about what God must be doing in life, I thought, now it seemed like I could hear from God about giving. You know, this is what the Lord wants me to do. So I just begin to apply that other th situation. How did I know I was supposed to give that person whatever I gave him? Well, I had this in my heart. It just ca it came to me that this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. I wasn't thinking about it. It was something I really liked, whatever it was, you know. Well, we learn this way, and it can be kind of embarrassing sometimes to do things for people, and they don't understand why in the world you did it. Maybe they don't know about receiving, and you're, you'll get this implication and that you maybe missed God on this. Well, okay, but nevertheless, we gave, and Jesus said, give, and it shall be given to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give our both, same measure with all, shall measure unto us again. And we need to always be flexible to move when God leads us to move. And the way we measure that is the way it's brought back to us. So we want to be, you know, instantly to learn, to obey the inward witness. Now, Jesus said, we read all the scriptures there in John 14, 15, and 16 about he sent the Holy Spirit to be our guide, our comforter, our teacher. He's our comforter, our paraclete, one called alongside to help. He'll help us pray. He'll help us intercede. He'll help us in witnessing. He'll help us in sharing the gospel. He'll bring the word back to our remembrance. Maybe we didn't even know, you know, that we knew that scripture. And we probably didn't, but he brought it back to our heart. And that's important because, you know, for our own selves and also for ministering to someone else. That we just sense that, you know, this is, this is what we're supposed to do. And we'll be about, about our way. And suddenly we just realize, you know, i got to tell somebody about Jesus or whatever. Maybe we don't know what to say. What are they going to think, you know, and on and on and on. See, there's a mind kicking in again. It really do, you know, our minds never want to be in an embarrassing situation. Our minds want to be informed about everything before it does everything. And our minds want us to be perfect before we ever step out to obey God. <clears throat> That's not going to happen. We start right where we're at. And we grow as we go. But the important thing is to be used by God. And you, it's exciting to be used by the Lord, knowing that at least I did what I believed I was supposed to. Could I miss God? Absolutely. Stuff like that happens. But at least I'm trying to follow him. And that's something we want to work on. And always be hungry to follow the Lord. So Jesus showed us here that when he's leaving, he's going to send the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he's going to lead us and guide us and show us things to come. He'll bring the word back to our memories. He'll let us know inside of our spirit about something that's going on that we need to be praying about. Or we need to take authority over it. Or we need to be aware of it. 
And our heads don't know things like this. I mean, heads know what it knows, and it calcula calculates and tries to figure out sums how things are going to be done. But the Apostle Paul said, I didn't come with the excellent wisdom of man's teachings, in other words. And he could. He was highly educated. But he came being led by the Holy Spirit. And this is how we minister as believers to other dear people. We just know, you know, I got to text a person, I got to call a person or whatever, you know. Uh, and that's how we follow God. And it doesn't mean it's going to be all supernatural. You know, we'd like for it to be, but sometimes wonder, well, remember I miss God on what i was doing about this. No, we did what we had in our heart. And we just give it to the Lord. And may not find out till you get to heaven that you did do what God told you to do. Or sometimes years go by before someone tells you. You know, I'd helped this family out one time, and the lady, the wife, you know, she's acting like that they didn't need any of this and all this, what I did for them. And I'm, you know, I thought I heard from God. Apparently, I must have missed God. I did it anyway. And somehow the Lord got me over through all this because he gets you kind of offended. And that's the objective of Satan is get you offended. Well, years went by, like 12. And this lady comes up to me in meeting and says, you remember one time when you da 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 you know? I wanted to say no, I don't remember that. But I you know, hadn't thought anything about it since then, too much or at all. But I should have told you then. But you're right on. Well, you know, if I'd have known then that I was right on, it would kind of help me realize, well, I, I did realize I did hear from God on this. But when I left their presence, when I'd done what I did, which is no big deal, when I left their presence, it's the condemnation's coming to me that I didn't know how to resist it, that I, you just missed God. You know, we just did something stupid. You leave this alone. You know, you didn't hear from God. But again, God, by his grace and mercy, got me past that point. How, I don't know, but thank God he did. You know, I'm just a, at the time, just a new Christian, born again, but trying to follow God. Well, you know, we do learn. So, so what if it happened? You know, you bless somebody with something, they don't want it, they don't like it, they said they didn't need it or didn't use it. So big deal, we gave. We did what God told us to do, or what we believe God told us to do. And definitely we did what the Word said to do. And of course, we need to be led about doing, but you face, you know, your, your, your flesh and your mind and all that wants to look important and looks like it never misses God and doesn't want to be an embarrassing situation. So our flesh and mind will always try to protect us from doing anything that would be embarrassing. Well, you know, it may look embarrassing, but hey, we're not moved by what we feel. We're moved by what God said, and he always told us to give. And as we practice it, we become better at it. You know, a lady I know is a friend of mine. Actually, she's a relative, but uh, and friend. So she was wanting to be, you know, led by God, and and she, so she's in a grocery store, and so it's checkout counter, and there's a lady in front of her that seems to be very distinguished, you know, and uh, she's buying, you know, getting her groceries, and the friend of mine, it comes to her heart, uh, offer to pay for that lady's groceries. What? You know, yeah, offer to pay for that lady's groceries. Well, you know, plus she's, you know, the worldly mind's thinking, what will my husband think? He finds out I bought somebody groceries. And then plus this lady doesn't look like she needs any money. And looks she's doing just fine, you know. But, you know, I wanted to hear from God. I've been wanting to follow God. And, and so here goes, you know. She goes, you know, I was embarrassed to say anything about it. But I thought, excuse me, ma'am. Um, and there's, she's almost checked out. Almost time time where you get to pay for it. She goes, uh, I, I'd just like to buy these groceries for you. Do you mind? But that lady looked at her and said, well, I have money, you know. Well, you see, the important point is she did it. You know, it's like for the first time going off the high dive. Now you've done something. Now you can know, you know, how, you know where you get rejected, accept it or not. I'm not too sure how this thing worked out. But with the, the really mind changed, helped change your life in this aspect of trying to be going by God. You know, took it on the chin, no big deal, went on. And was used by God, still is. And praise God, we, we, we practice. We're kids. So we're learning. And we need to. I mean, you know, when we started crawling around walking, you know, how many times a little kid falls down? It's over 200 times before they really take their first successful step. You know, bounce around, you know. Well, hey, praise God, they want to walk. They want to walk on their own. And they get so, boy, when they do, that first thing, when they can stand by themselves, they look around, make sure everybody's looking, you know. Proud as can be because look at me. I'm just as big as everybody else is. <laughs> well, we're, as believers, we always want to grow spiritually. You know, Paul said, I wouldn't give you meat, but I'd give you milk. Why was, oh, the people, bless their hearts, were, you know, carnal. They got division going on, all this. We don't want that in our life. We know to walk in love, forgive other people. But nevertheless, you know, that can kind of hinder our growth there. So we don't want anything like that to enter our spiritual growth. But nevertheless, uh, as believers, we build our life on God's word. 
and then also in our ministry part of our life to be a blessing to the people. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit just moved on our heart to share a scripture with someone or whatever, you know. And we also need to be led by the Holy Spirit about what in the world we're supposed to do in life and how to follow the Lord. What does the Lord want me to do? Well, you know, we need to find out. And how are we going to find out? Well, by waiting on God in prayer, by being open to him. Lord, is there anything you want me to do? I think it's reveal it to me. And, you know, he'll move on our hearts to do things. It may not be something we really want to do, but afterwards we realize it was a God's blessing. Thank God I did it. Amen for that. Praise God for that. Because that's how we grow. That's how we learn more. Stepping out for God and being a blessing and being led by God. And we, we grow in this area. Don't take any condemnation over this if you had not heard from God. All of us hear from God. We just didn't realize it was him telling us to do this. And he doesn't bring us into guilt and condemnation. He doesn't reprimand us and scold us because we missed him. No, he's here to help us out. The Holy Spirit's our helper to help us. You know, he didn't come along and make our life harder. He came along to help, her, help us. He's our helper. And we need to learn to depend on him for guidance, intuition, inward witness. And what's going to help us to flow in the gifts of spirit? Stay open to it. It suddenly became a word to you. Like that lady's around the vacuum tube. It came to her heart. Like a word of wisdom, word of knowledge that she knew something was going on with her kid. And thank God she followed on it. That she did it, you know. She's never going to forget that. Well, thank God she knows that God did it for her. You know, think about it. She just ran the vacuum sweep for two more minutes or three more minutes. How long could the kids last in that thing? Well, we don't want to find out. But the point is, it came to her. She shut the vacuum sweeper up, started, you know, yelled out her husband. He hadn't seen the child. And on and on and on. That's the benefit that we have the Holy Spirit in our life. Suddenly, because our heads don't know stuff like this. Our flesh doesn't know things like this, but the Holy Spirit knows everything. And he'll reveal to us in our spirit about something that's going on. And as parents and ministers and pastors and evangelists, everybody needs to be led by the Holy Spirit in the body of Christ. And we learn by, first of all, just being hungry and wanting to know more about it and study more about it and be prepared for it and be open to it. That the risk, you know, like my relative asking the lady, do you care if I pay for your groceries? i got to find out how that turned out. But anyway, thank God she stepped out and did that. You know, that, that's what we want to do, is step out and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. By the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Thank God. Amen. Father God, we pray today. We thank you for the privilege and honor to be led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for always leading us and guiding us and revealing truth to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not too sure. Or you may know for sure you've never done it. But you know, today is your day of salvation. God wants you to receive his son, Jesus Christ. The biggest step of faith you can take, the biggest decision you can make, is receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. Then you, when you do it, you got it over with through eternity. And I'll read these scriptures to you from Romans chapter 10. If you're not too sure, or you definitely know you haven't done it, let's do it today and be sure. Pray this prayer with me after I read these scriptures. And you'll receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in the heart, God is raised dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart, men believe the righteous, with the mouth confession made salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. Real simple. All we have to do is believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and he's been raised from the dead. Can you do that? The word scripture. The scripture says you can. Good. Let's pray this prayer and receive Jesus as our Lord. Pray it after me and mean it. And you become saved. You'll become born again. God, I come to you to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I believe in my heart, I confess my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. I believe Jesus Christ was crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment sin, died. God, you're raising dead his life today. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord right now and Savior. Thank you for saving me from going to hell. In Jesus' name, God, I thank you now. You're my Heavenly Father. Jesus is my Lord. Amen. You pray that prayer? Good for you. I'd like to hear from you. You can email me at jesserichministries.com. Or if you want to write me, you can at Jesse Ritz Ministries, Post Office Box 237170, New York, New York, 10023. And also we have our, our conference on the phone at 7 o'clock at night. That phone number and access code is right here on our Facebook page at Jesse Ritz Ministries. Call in if you got prayer requests. Usually we take prayer requests at, at night, you know, on that, on that time of fellowship with each other. And we have communion. You want to take advantage of that also. Be, be, be with the saints on the phone. Hallelujah for that. And so take advantage of that. If you're enjoying these programs, let other people know about them. It's been a blessing here on Facebook and YouTube. Enjoy being here today. I want to encourage you. Just keep following the Lord. Do what he leads you to do. He'll get you through everything as we just trust and look to him. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mind. I love you. I'm praying for you. And remember, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father.